welcome everyone to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad, your host on ConradRocks.net. Where's my coffee? I don't know. I don't have it on me right now. But anyway, this is the year of our Lord, 2014. The date is January 28th. I have some news for you today. We're going to talk about it from a Christian perspective. So put on your headphones, put on your glasses, get your cup of coffee, whatever you do, man. Just do it. I'm going to bring you the news today. It's going to be awesome. Okay, everyone, I got some news here I wanted to share with you. This is Coffee with Conrad. It's going to be January 28, 2014. Katy Perry worships the devil on stage. Yeah. You see, I've been telling you not to watch your TV. You're sitting here wanting to watch some Emmys, and all of a sudden you're getting some Satanism put into your soul through your eyeballs. You got to watch coming in through your eyeballs and your earballs and your ear gate and all that. Dude, television's of the devil. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, uh, here we go. Christian singer walks out on Grammys after a satanic performance. Natalie Grant walked out. She tweets about it. And she doesn't. She's coy about it. But I'm going to read you some of the actual tweets. And this is what's happening here. Uh, Natalie Grant splits after she sees this, apparently. Katy Perry conducts bizarre witchcraft ceremony during the Grammys. And here's... Uh, Paul Joseph Watson from InfoWars is the guy that does this. I usually don't use them as a source, but here's some actual tweets, so I'm going to use it, okay? Now, look at this. First off, from my video audience, that doesn't look holy. She's got flames of fire. She looks like a witch, and this is not, this does not rock for Jesus. Natalie Grant, here's her tweet. Uh, we left the Grammys early. I have many thoughts, most of which are probably better left inside my head, but I'll say this, going to tweet two. I'd never been more honored to sing about Jesus and for Jesus, and I've never been sh more sure of the path that I've chosen. So here we go. Natalie Grant, she follows me on Twitter, or she did. I don't know. I've tweeted back and forth with her once a couple of times. I'm like, hey, brother, look. Natalie Grant, I'm going to tweet her. And she tweeted me back. I was like, yeah, that rocks. Anyway, so here we go. There are some tweets here. This is from E! Online. Here's some tweets of what people said. Now, I didn't watch this, and I'm going to play a little bit here just to show you. You know, you're sitting here thinking you're going to watch something wholesome. Or you're not, you don't think that anymore. You're not that stupid. But anyway, you're sitting here thinking, oh, I'm going to watch the Grammys. I'm just going to... I'm just going to have myself some popcorn. I'm just going to have a little Diet Coke. You know, things that are going to kill my flesh. And while I'm killing my flesh, I might as well kill my spirit by watching this hellhole satanic show on TV. So anyway, here's E! Online. They're tweeting, um, did we just witness actual witchcraft during Katy Perry's hashtag Grammys performance? That was from E! Online. Now we move on to Chantal Herrera. I don't know who she is, but she got a few retweets. 15 retweets, 22 favorites. I'm like 99% sure Katy Perry just summoned Satan during her performance. So there you go. Here's Gomilla. Now all the little girls that look up to Katy Perry will worship Satan. Come on, man. This is a Twitter stream. This is what people are saying. Josie Strokes, just when I try to brush the Illuminati off, here comes Katy Perry with Baphomet everywhere. I don't know. Apparently, there's some satanic symbols. For my video audience, look at this. Come on, man. Satanic Ritual, that's the title of it. It's got the CBS logo there. 2014 Grammy Illuminati Rituals Revealed. That's another one. Now, I'm going to play a little bit. Look at this. Look at this satanic stuff here. Okay, why are you watching television? You know, you're being programmed by the devil, the God of the airways. What are you doing? What are you doing? Thank God. You know, Christians are compromising. Christians are compromising. Natalie left. You know, she didn't, she left. And you got to not associate with people in this world to do these things. you got to walk out. We've got to be ye holy, be ye separate, saith the Lord. Now I'm going to press play here, and you're going to notice something funny. There's no audio, so the copyright thing has been broken, obviously. But look here. Does that look holy to you? She's, she's sitting here wearing hardly any clothes. She's got some gown on, and she's singing in front of a 
I don't know, some time. And then look at those guys left. Those are obviously the goats of the devil. And then, man, yeah. This is not good, guys. This is not good. I turn my TV off. <laughs> that is not holy. Okay, that's not something I want my kids watching. That's not something I want my kids' kids watching. That's not something somebody goes to church should watch. I mean, you know, I am not perfect, but this is of the devil. Look at that. I mean, don't look at it. Stop looking at it. I'm going to stop right here and let's go to my go to my page. Um Anyway, my hat's off to Natalie Grant for having the courage to stand up. You know, Jesus says, whosoever will def deny me before men, I'll deny before my father. Right? Man, that is awesome. Did you left? Get out of there. You know, now on the other hand, there are times to go into the dens of iniquity to snatch them out from the fiery house that they're in. But this is one where you need to make a statement. You know, if you're a Christian, are you going to let the world seep into your soul? I mean, we're eating popcorn. We're drinking, we're drinking the chemicals. We're killing our flesh. We're not thinking, people. We're not thinking. Okay, Natalie. Exercise some judgment. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his ways of doing things right. Be ye separate. Be holy. Get away from there. Amen. Hats off to Natalie Grant. Bonjour. This is Charles Michael from France. Also known as Teacher of Righteousness. And you are listening to Café with Conrad. And it is a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. You're my cry, oh God, to my prayer. Thank you for visiting ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks is supported by people just like you. If you've been blessed by Conrad Rocks, please prayerfully consider giving an offering. You can conveniently do so by using the Contribute button on the sidebar at ConradRocks.net. Regular contributors get a spot on the Conrad's Comrades page, which links back to the blog or social media of your choice. You can also help Conrad Rocks by sharing your favorite posts on Facebook. Thanks again for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Remember, Jesus rules. That is higher than Now, here's something that came across my desk as I was looking for news stories. With a Christian perspective, you know, probably the prophetic Christian perspective. And I ran across this. I just wanted to share it with you. It's kind of interesting. It's um, 1948, about a time castle. And it has a few, there's a few caveats to this story that I found compelling. And I want to share it with you. 1948 time capsule discovered in California church before demolition and there was an 1875 Bible found inside this is from the Christian Post dated January 26, 2014 a constructions crew was preparing to demolish a California church last week it uncovered a piece of history a time capsule from 1948 now, I've told you over and over and over that as I read the news and I'm looking for stuff to share with you, that I often read about churches being closed down, churches being robbed. I heard from a military man, two, two military, two separate military men, churches being closed down. There's no ministry here. Stuff like that. Baby Jesus being robbed from the manger scenes. Now I know oh it's an idol. You don't wanna you don't care about stealing an idol. Dude, people are making a point. People are making a point. Even though, yeah, they're stealing an idol, but they're making a point. And the point I'm getting is there's no power in the church. And in California here um, California's a beautiful state. I used to live there. It's really pretty. Um, I used to snorkel there, boogie board in Huntington Beach, man. 
but I didn't know my neighbor. When I drive down the street, I could drive for miles, and I didn't see a church. Here in Texas, man, I'm in a little bitty town. Dude, there's a church on every... I can't walk down any street without running into a church. You know, we're in the Bible Belt, praise God. Let's get some more light in here. Anyway... So, when I was in California, I'd go back and visit. I haven't been for quite some time. I see no point. Um, I mean, you know, California, it's like, oh. Used to have some friends there. I guess I still have some friends. We communicate online, I guess. Um, But the deal is, there's no churches there. There's, like, okay, there's churches there, but not like there are here. You get what I'm saying? Stop trying to shoot down my, my little points there. You know what I'm saying. You can go 20 miles without seeing a church. And then here's their, they're demolishing one here, and they find a time capsule. See, this to me, this reminds me of, you know, the treasure buried. Someone's going to find it someday, but they're still demolishing the church. Let's read on some more here. The box, which is made of copper and was soldered shut, was discovered behind the cornerstone. at St. Paul's Church in Berkeley, California. According to Berkeley site, it was found after developer Bill Schrader Jr. told his construction crew to save the cornerstone so it could be included as part of the new apartment building that will be constructed on that site. That right there says, you know, the capstone which the builders rejected has now become the head of the corner. In America now, we have that new head of the corner, the corner of the church, the cornerstone. It's now going to be an apartment building. Instead of opening the box himself, Schrader gave it to Leonard Nielsen of the Presbytery of San Francisco, the organization that previously owned the church. Nielsen, who serves as the pastor of Christ Presbyterian Church in San Orlando, also works with the other churches in the Presbytery, and over the so, oversaw the sale of St. Paul's. Nielsen opened the time capsule on Monday. Inside were, among other things, a Bible from 1875, programs from the church's groundbreaking ceremony in 1948, and a brief history of the founding of the church. The box also contained flyers from the temperance movement that were written by the church founding pastor, Frank Shunk Downs, in addition to the leading of the church. Downs also served as president of the California Temperance League. Just so you know there, the temperance movement is a social movement urging reduced or prohibited use of alcoholic beverages. I had to look it up. Um, Nielsen says the church was probably built by people who settled down. He doesn't even know the history of his church. By people who settled down in Berkeley after World War II, and at the time it wasn't uncommon for people from the community to gather together to construct their own church building with the Presbytery's financial support. It's a story about a particular time that doesn't exist anymore, how people lived in neighborhoods. Nielsen told Berkeley Side. The church was a big social connection in those days. You can look at the time capsule and realize the whole story of how that little teeny church got started. These little churches were built with enthusiasm and a very, very local connection. Now, what I wanted to, to, to highlight here, when you were talking about Katy Perry worshiping the devil at <laughs> the Grammys. Basically, that wasn't holy, you know. If you're not worshiping God, who are you worshiping, right? Something else, something that's not God, something anti-God, something anti-Christ. So we have here, the church was a big social connection in those days. That caught me because over this past weekend, I went to the Compass Ministry. I went I went with people. You know how Jesus went up a mountain and he called up the twelve? Um, yeah, Jesus went up the mountain and he called to him 12. I had a chance, you know, Jesus was up higher. We're looking at the geography of this theology. We're looking at, it's in a mountain. Who shall ascend upon the mount of the most high? Notice the mount of olives, the mount of transfiguration. He shall put his foot on a mount, Mount Carmel, 
where Elijah ran off the prophets. I mean, there, there's something to this thing. Though I go through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, Jesus in Mark 3.13 here, we're going to look at it. Um, he goeth up into a mountain, and he calleth unto him whom he would, and they came to him. And he ordained the twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. My point is this. The church now is not designed to call people higher. It's a social club. It's where people are hanging out to enjoy each other. People are socializing. Christianity has been reduced to a mere social clique. As a harlot can reduce a man to a loaf of bread, Christianity has been reduced to a social clique. The cornerstone of a church is now a cornerstone of an apartment building. People today think Christianity is just like every other religion. They think it's just like Islam, just like Judaism, just like Buddhism. They're all the same. It's just another religion. It's just another because there's no power, because it's just a social club. And I've talked about this before. I, I know of a man, South American country. He lives in a little 10 by 10 room. And his whole life is the gospel. Day in, day out, orphanages, all that. He has an expensive film projector that the church bought for him. He shows the Jesus film on the side of a building and he can go eat. Come back and it's still there. No one dares steal it because they know you do not steal from a man of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. People are still choosing to lend their, leave, live their sinful lifestyles. But they know there's something about that Jesus. But here we have, even when you have a church, when there's one in California, even when you have a church, it's for socializing. This article will be today in conradrocks.net. And I just wanted to share it with you. I thought it was interesting. A time capsule. A time capsule. A treasure from the past. Schrader says he plans to reuse the time capsule by placing modern items in it and burying it behind the church cornerstone when it's built into the new apartment building. He also plans to keep the church's copper steeple and use it as part of the landscaping. So the work of Jesus Christ, the steeple in the shape of a cross, that's what they're normally in the shape of, is now art. Christianity is now reduced to a social club, and the steeples are art. Just shine in the light, guys. Hey, this is Amy from Amy Daily, and you are listening to Coffee with Conrad on conradrocks.net. brought to you by Nancy Petrie, the author of Jewish Roots Journey on Amazon. Uh, if you go to conradrocks.net and you look at the Conrad's 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 page, you can see that she's on the top right now. Um, she's supporting this month. And she has a few pages here. Here's Ms. Pa Tikva Ministries. You can find that on the Conrad's Conrad's page. You can hype it's hyperlinked to her Facebook page right here. Um, 
Mizpah, that's M-I-Z-P-A-H-T-I-K-V-A-H Ministries. That's her Facebook page. You can go there and check it out. Um, also, she's on Twitter. That's Petri underscore Nancy. And here's her book. Um, I want to go ahead and re I'm reading her book right now. Last week we were extremely busy, and I didn't get to read much. But uh, Amazon, if you look right here, I do. I have something called uh, highlight. I can highlight, and I go back. Is that showing up on the camera? Yeah, I can highlight the text, and I I show that to you guys, um, so that that uh, I I want to read something interesting to you. And in her book, it's Memoirs of a Mizpah. She talks about her journeys to Israel and her her quest for learning more about the Messiah, the Jewishness of Jesus, and making that known to the Gentiles. So it's a very enlightening book. And here's something interesting in, in the, the chapter here, uh, one, one of her chapters in Memoirs of a Mizpah. I'm trying to figure out which one I'm in. <clears throat> Another resource I used for the Genesis course was the Discovery of Genesis by C. Kang and Ethel R. Nelson. The authors, the authors showed how the truths of Genesis were found hidden in the Chinese language. Now, she was talking about how old the Chinese culture is, how old the Chinese language is. And this is the part I highlighted because I'm like, going, wow, that's pretty amazing. This is an astounding discovery because Chinese characters, you know how the Chinese characters are, they're not really letters, they're symbols, right? Chinese characters are used by more people than any other script, and the Chinese have the oldest culture on the earth, and their picture language is a record of Earth's beginnings. Their word for creation pictures, Adam is the first live man made of dust. Okay, The word for to covet is composed of two trees and a woman. Amen? <laughs> the word for boat is is a vessel of eight people. You know, Noah escaped the flood in the ark, a boat with his wife, three sons, and their wives, a total of eight people. These are only a few examples. Now, if you guys check out the book, it's only $8, as you can see, $7.99 on Kindle at Amazon.com right now. Now, also, a couple of other resources. We're almost to the end of the month here, so I want to make sure that you, you understand all the stuff that uh, she's got going on. Coffee with Conrad in the sidebar, on the right-hand sidebar, you won't be able to access in your mobile browser, but you can in your, your computer browser. Coffee with Conrad, January sponsor, Nancy Petrie. You're going to see a full interview with American Family Radio's Today's Issues. You can download the recording if you want to. It's not like a try-before-you-buy thing, and I think you can try before you buy on uh, Amazon on a lot of books. But you can listen to a, a, an interview about her book, so check it out. That's on the sidebar there. And if you go to uh, curtispetrie.blogspot.com, one of the one of our friends at a glow <clears throat> went over here and watched this most recent video. It's words of wisdom. This is basically Curtis's sermons, um, which is her husband. But here's the most recent post. We put it up. His eyes on the sparrow, and this actually is written about in the book. But they did a video interview. This is another thing about amazing story about how a, a, pair, a sparrow showed up at their house, and it had a lot to do with the book. Amazing video testimony. It's 4 minutes and 58 seconds long. Thank you, Nancy, for being the sponsor in January 2014 for Coffee with Conrad. find something else new about the Grammys. The Grammys are just really irking me, and I don't even watch TV. <laughs> I see it in my stream. I see it in the news stream. When I do searches for news, basically I'm, uh, you know, I have search for keywords and stuff. And then after I look, what I'm trying to look for, I'll look for words like Jesus, religion, church, stuff like that. 
and I'm looking for stuff that you know Christians can relate to and then after that I'll go look for the top news and so forth this wasn't really a major news story because <laughs> look at who runs the media I mean you know the god of the airwaves the god of the air I mean it's it's amazing the big six it used to be the big six now I think the the mainstream media is handled by five um, companies or corporations and if you read the news I was sitting here talking to Susan yesterday about something I was listening I started downloading podcasts and I started listening to some secular news not forever I just did it for every once in a while I'll listen to like CBS NBC or whatever and I noticed that they just blatantly I'm not gonna say it was but they just blatantly said something false and it's been I mean literally it's been almost 20 years since I've um, yeah, it's almost been 20 years since I unplugged from television. So, and then these are basically podcasts that are ripped from the the TV. And I'm like, going, well, I, I know that's not true, but however, they were saying something that was just like so matter of factly. And I'm going, man, no one. And, and I was talking to Susan. I'm like, don't they have a responsibility to it? Because when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I used to just think, well, they can't just lie. <laughs> Then I was, I guess I was naive. Uh, we know that Hitler, he was uh, a master of propaganda, and he was basically using the media to brainwash the masses. And he says, if you tell a lie long enough, loud enough, pretty soon people will believe it. That's why commercials are so effective. They're so effective. Like, for instance, there's a, a, a gentleman that did a study. Uh, I know a lot of people don't agree with him, so I'm not going to mention who he is, but it, the, he uh, did a study on how many times it takes for a person to see a commercial before they decide to buy the product. You know, in the beginning, they forget it, but after about five, it becomes annoying, and about the 20th time they see a commercial, they want to buy the product. So the things that are happening now in the media uh, that we're seeing in the mainstream media, there's messages, and if you think about it, there's things like product pay placement. I don't watch the uh, uh, TV at all, but every once in a while I'll look at Netflix or something whenever I'm really wanting to dig deep. <laughs> Kidding. But I do, I do notice things like product placement. I'm telling you, when you unplug, when you unplug from watching TV for quite some time and then all of a sudden you watch a little bit, um, your critical thinking, you, you still retain some of it. Whenever you start watching television, basically the reason it's so effective is it bypasses your, your uh, critical thinking. You, you go into what's called an alpha state, which is close to hypnosis. And the stuff that goes in your eye gate and your ear gate, both of them are being attacked by the devil at that point, kind of just goes past your mental thing. You're zoning out. You ever heard I've been zoning out and watching TV? So these messages that we currently keep getting over and over and over, they may not be in the form of a commercial, they may not be in the form of a product placement, but they are in the form of just, well, let's just read the article. Um, Kirk Cameron tweeted something about this yesterday. I don't have his tweet, um, but uh, Susan read it, and it turned me on to this article here. Here we go. I got this in my pocket. This is from um, Fox News, and it's about the Grammys being of the devil. January 27th, foxnews.com, Grammys say we do, and they get political with mass wedding. Now, I played earlier the clip of, um, you know, just this completely satanic ritual, and I didn't watch the show. I wouldn't even talk about something on TV. And then all of a sudden, I mean, you're just getting this, you're getting this message that, that Hollywood is trying to just say, hey, we're in your face. We don't believe God. We don't respect the things of the Bible. And uh, anyway, here's what's happening. This year, the Grammy Awards weren't just about the music. They were also about making a statement. Now, keep in mind, just a handful of people control what you watch. I want you to think about that as I read this article. Just a handful of people control mainly what you're watching, the programming, the commercials, the messages that you get. And when Costco put fiction on a Bible, where does this, a little leaven leavens a whole lump. These thoughts that come out, they start from somewhere 
and they're starting to invade the church at a rate that's unprecedented. Uh, this year, the Grammy Awards weren't just about making music. They were about also making a statement in the same-sex marriage debate. Heavily hyped in the hours leading up to Sunday's sh night show, 34 couples, and I didn't see this, I didn't hear about it, I just kind of accidentally found out about it in my news stream, or a tweet from uh, Kirk Cameron. 34 couples, both gay and straight, exchanged rings and said, I do. Now, you know, the gay and straight, basically, um, I guess they're just trying to, to mix it up, I guess, I don't know as officiated on stage by Queen Latifah. Now, I think I did a show not too long ago about how Queen Latifah had faith, all right? So, where are we gonna go with this here? The actress, rapper, talk show host was recently deputized by Los Angeles County to legally conduct wedding ceremonies and will sign the marriage certificates for each couple. The event took place on a stage that's set to resemble a giant chapel See, they're wanting to emulate things of Christ. Um, the giant chapel is obviously a, an attempt to mock God or an attempt deep down to, to, you know, they know that there's a God and they're trying to, to, to be approved. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm not really, I'm not a, um, I have to choose my words carefully here. I'm not against, I, there's been a lot of homosexuals in my life, transgenders, I was like, I don't know why God keeps putting me in these places because I have no leaning toward that. But one of the things that I've noticed is they do have a couple of things. There's the desire to be accepted. And I can empathize with that. I desire to be accepted. Um, I don't hate them. I don't think we should, I don't think we should hate them. And then there's also that seeking of God. But I'm going to tell you something. For those of us that have other sins in our lives, I mean, one of the large arguments is that, you know, they're born that way. Well, we're all born with a sinful nature. We all have wicked desires that we're to overcome. The psalmist said, I have kept myself from mine iniquity. In other words, I'm not giving in to this sinful desire that I have. You know, and then he did give in with Bathsheba. Now, why is that? He knew it was adultery. I mean, he just let himself slip. We're supposed to have self-control in these areas, even though our flesh fights against us. We walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. These desires are, um, you know, they're natural according to the flesh. Um, you know, we have sinful desires, and we just don't want to give in to them. And, however, I do understand that that this is a very strong spirit, um, and I do empathize on one level. But the problem is when you when you when it's in your face, and then you're denying God. What you're basically doing is you're fighting that spirit. You're trying to you're trying to quench the spirit. You're trying to shut the voice up of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. You know it's wrong. And there's these there's these things that we want to seek approval. And this is what's happening with the church today. Um, this is a big deal, and I see this happening in an amazing, an alarming rate in the church. Uh, and, and I was talking with Susan again last night. First off, my speech has been about America needs to repent. And I was talking yesterday about how the sonship thing and building the honeycomb is making disciples, is basically actually taking people under our wings and making ready a people for the Lord. And what's happening now is we're compromising for things that aren't biblical. Okay? And as we were reading a Watchman Nee book last night, He said something that was interesting, and I've been trying to articulate this for years, and he puts it in one sentence, and I, I guess I could have thought of this earlier, or maybe I have, but he, he's basically, you ever have a Christian come up to you and say, well, is it okay to do this, and is it okay to do that, is it okay to do this, is it okay to do that? Well, number one, I want to tell you something. When someone's asking you that, what they're saying is, I'm not in touch with the Spirit of God in me. I'm not in touch with it. I'm not listening to that voice. And 
that's number one. And number two, if they are, and there's there's more than one voice in the spiritual realm, of course. And the, the other point is they're not reading their Bibles. Now, the Bible is a rigid, um, if we're after the law, it's a very rigid thing. Um, there's all these sets of rules, but sometimes there's some things that we're not supposed to talk about, like the Bible doesn't say don't watch TV, but there are there's nothing new under the sun. So there is something there if we just look. You know, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes in the Old Testament. Um, Job says, I've made a covenant with my eyes. Why should I look upon a fair maiden? Well, that's what you're doing when you look on TV. And you're looking at Jezebel <laughs> yesterday, you know, in the Grammys. So we're not supposed to set wicked things before our eyes and so forth. But anyway, when these people are coming up to us and they're asking us, is it okay to do this? Is it okay to do that? Well, what they're really saying is, I don't hear... I'm not listening to God. And it's not that people don't hear from God. I mean, the Holy Spirit even convicts the world of sin. But once we're believers and we have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in us, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in you, the Scripture says you're none of His. So we need to be attentive to the Spirit. So I'm going to ask you this, and this is what Watchman Nee said. He goes, did the Holy Spirit, what did the Holy Spirit tell you? So in our discipling, we need to get people to ask themselves, is the Holy Spirit telling you to watch a show that glorifies Satan is that what the Spirit of God is telling you to do is the Holy Spirit telling you to reject what the Bible says that marriage is you know between a man and a woman that for this reason a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife is that what the Spirit is telling you so I've been saying for a long time, turn off the TV. It's it's poisoning. As you're having your popcorn and your Diet Coke and these things that are killing your flesh, you're saying, I might as well just kill my soul too. You know, people are worried so much. I've been seeing this so often. Christians, these 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 doctrines that are pervading the church, they're watching TV. Okay, they're watching TV. They're quoting Dr. Oz. They're quoting Dr. Phil. They're quoting all these people, but they're not quoting the Bible. You can tell when you have a conversation. When, you, when asking, when you're having a conversation about anything, they'll say Dr. Oz, which is a Muslim, okay, says this. So they're quoting a Muslim over the Bible. Now, the uh, another thing, and I was talking to Susan about this again, is I was saying, let's imagine this for a second. Let's just think about this. Everybody pretty much agrees that Billy Graham has a sound biblical doctrine. Now, I don't, this guy's holy. I mean, I, I don't know too much about it. I, have, I just remember as a kid when this guy did an altar call, when he preached something, he was talking, he was, he was talking to something, and all three parts of you knew that God was in this, right? So, you know, your mind would go, yeah. That's right, because your spirit, your spirit, when the spirit of God talks to you, he talks to your spirit, and then your heart, you know, gets involved, and then your head. So what, what we're trying to do when we become saved, when we become saved, the carnal mind is at enmity with God. It can't understand the things. So even when you're saved, your, your carnal mind can't get God. So that's why we have to walk after the spirit and not after the carnal mind, because if we walk after the carnal mind, we're still going to fall off into the ditch, right? So what we're trying to do, is when we listen to the Spirit of God, trying to get all three congruent, which means in a line. When I say in a line, look at God in heaven, in your three dots, let's say your one dot's your head, one dot's your heart, and the other one's your spirit. All of them to line up with the Word of God and not look to the left and not look to the right. Well, Billy Graham, you know, from the 50s, we're sitting here like going, man, this guy, you, you had a sense in the Spirit that he was saying a spiritual thing. And that he was uh, also appealing intellectually. He's going, you know what? Let's line up. Let's line up what the Scripture says, the Bible says. And you knew, in your heart, in your heart, and in your spirit, you knew that God created the heavens and the earth. I mean, it's just, you look around. You're like, on you know, all of creation screams out that Jesus is Lord. So what we were talking about, I was like, on you know, let's just let's just take an example. Let's just say that every preacher, every preacher since the 50s, since we, since we began to fall from grace, 
let's just say Billy Graham cloned himself spiritually and physically. It doesn't have to be physically, but spiritually cloned himself. And every preacher in America preached the same message. <clears throat> okay? We wouldn't be watching this stuff. And what I'm saying here, and, and, and I used to have, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of leaning to the other side of the fence here. Because I'm always uh, like the, the famous preachers that preach the sloppy grace. Uh, that preach you can do whatever you want. There is such thing as a carnal Christian. You know, Christians that call Jesus Lord and sin all they want. Well, the demons call Jesus Lord and they're going to hell. Right? Revelation is 21.8. <clears throat> just to get it in front of your face again because I, I tell you guys this because I don't want you to go to hell <laughs> you know what I mean what does the Bible say um, but the fearful and, and for you guys I think that Jesus listed fear first here for a reason we're afraid to go out there and proclaim Jesus as Lord proclaim means man they used to have the before they're about to conquer a city they'd have the the uh, I forget what his name was but the guy that would go out there and he would declare he would roll the scrolls apart and he would proclaim like proclaiming the gospel think of this he would roll the king's orders out and say hey here's your terms of surrender we're going to take you over either you <clears throat> either you surrender peaceably and it'll go better for you or we're just going to annihilate you so <clears throat> When you think of proclaiming the gospel, you know, we need to have that kind of authority in our mind under the, in the name, nature, character, and authority of Christ. And a lot of us are fearful to do that because you know what we're doing? We're loving our lives unto the death. We're loving ourselves. We're loving our bodies. And our, our life is just a small, it's just a small portion. It's just a small blip on the radar of eternity. And we're so caught up with what happens in 70 years that we're, we're blinded to the fact that God of this world coming through the Grammys, coming through the television, is sitting here and just lying to us over and over and over again. And guess what? We enjoy it. We love it. Instead of the reading the Bible, we turn on the tube. And, and you know what we're saying? Lord, I don't want you. I want Satan. I mean, I'm just trying, I'm just, I'm talking to myself here. There's a point where you're like going, you know, I want to watch scantily clad women worship the devil and do witchcraft rituals on TV rather than read my Bible or pray. I want to watch... Dude, I don't know why we're watching TV anyway. These people hate you. <laughs> they hate you. If you're a Christian, they want to enforce their morals upon you, and they don't have any. Their morals are not biblical, and they're trying to poison you. Why watch it? They love it when you quote Dr. Oz rather than the Bible. That's what they want. So anyway, continuing on with Revelation 21.8, but the fearful, the unbelieving, unbelieving, do you not believe the Bible? Do you not believe God's word? If you believe it, are you going to let the devil entertain you? I know, I'm preaching hard here. <laughs> But I'm like, you know, if you believe God's word, aren't you going to do what it says? And, and, and as I was talking about, if Billy Graham cloned himself, he was pretty biblical. Now, the, the what I'm coming around to, and I know it says abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. Idolatry, watching TV is putting an idol before God. You know, anything you put before God is an idol. Even yourself, you can be an idol, okay? And it says, shall have their part in the lake which burned with bimstone and fire, which is a second death, right? Um, there's many, many, many scriptures that say this. I'm trying to, I, I don't want to keep going through all of them. But like Galatians, Ephesians, you know, no whoremonger, you know, all these people, they won't make it. You know, you can call yourself a Christian, but there are certain things, there are certain sins we're supposed to overcome. Okay? <clears throat> anyway, so going back to what I was talking about, let's just say for an example that every preacher was Billy Graham clone, a spiritual clone. And we didn't have the sloppy grace. We didn't have all the carnal Christian or, you know, all these false doctrines in the church. 
Well, I think it would be more like this honeycomb thing that we're talking about. Every time somebody put fiction on a Bible, like in Costco, the whole body of Christ would move as one and say, no. And guess what? TV would serve us. We wouldn't be serving it. If you look at the idol in Revelation, um, it talks about how the, the idol causes you to do things. In Revelation 13, um, let's let's talk about 1314 I, I wanna I want to get a point across here and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth I mean we're dwelling on the earth we're dwelling on the things of the flesh the things of the world that they should make an image to the beast which had by a uh, wound by a sword and did live and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast the image there's an image here that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the beast, image of the beast should be killed. Now, I want, to, I want you to get something. And I don't know if this is going to go over your head. I pray that it doesn't. But this is the only time in a Bible, and I've probably said this before, this is the only image in the Bible that speaks, the only idol in the Bible that speaks. What does your TV do? It speaks. Now, also... It says, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in uh, their right hand or their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of the name. So, notice here that it causes you to do things. Now, my point is, if you never turned on the TV, I'm just, now, bear with me here, because this is a, it's basically a very simple concept and I'm speaking to your spirit, if you never turned on the TV, then you wouldn't know what it's saying, okay? Then you wouldn't be caused to do anything that it says, okay? Now that we turn on the TV, even unbeknownst to us, we're not thinking. Like I said, um, a guy named Krugman, you may not agree with him or whatever, but the, the science is valid. He uh, said in the first 20 seconds, 20, 30 seconds, our minds go into alpha state, right? And they cause our critical thinking to stop, and we go into what's called a hypnotic state. And these things are being parked into our spirit through our eye gate and our ear gate. And we hear things like the purple pill. So when we have stomach acid, instead of leaning to our authority, the just shall live by faith. What does faith mean? It means believe in something God said. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So what does the word of God say? It says the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. But instead of doing that, instead of going to our authority, we go to something that we put in our spirit 10 times more than the Bible. 10 times more than the Bible. 20 times more than the Bible. TV. hundred times. Some of us 100 times. I don't know. I've read statistics where people watch 20 or 30 hours of TV a week. Now, how much Bible reading do you do to counteract that? Okay? So, this image that speaks causes you to take the purple pill. It causes you to quote it. It says, Dr. Oz says that people are born gay or Dr. Phil or, or whatever, and that it's okay. Then it causes you to unbelieve. In Revelation 21.8, as we were reading, the unbelieving. It causes you to not believe the word of God. In Genesis, it says, has God said? That's what the devil's trying to get you to do. He's trying to get you to, to, to doubt the validity of God's word. So going back to what I was talking about, the sloppy grace things, that what they've, the, the, the itching ears preachers, they're saying things that they want to hear. Let me find that scripture for you. In 2 Timothy 4.3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, enduring sound doctrine is, is basically cognitive dissonance, and I talk about it. You can do a Google search right now for a video search, cognitive dissonance in the teacher. It explains a lot about the struggle between our spirit and our mind. This enduring thing. We've got to endure. Sound doctrine causes us to want to change. Repentance means to change our mind. To go from going to hell to going to God. Repent. We have to endure. We have to change. The Spirit, if we walk after the Spirit, that is how we repent. <laughs> we, and the Spirit never violates Scripture. So 
here's this deal. The people, uh, there's a time that will come they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, okay? Lust is something of the flesh, is something evil, right? So what we're doing is we're heaping up the sloppy grace doctrines, the sloppy grace preachers. We're giving them money because what they're doing is they're soothing our conscience. They're trying to. It's not working. Okay, the head, our brain is like going, oh, okay, they're Bible chopping this scripture. Let's put it on the fridge. Let's just cut out the scripture right before and right after it. Let's just, oh, okay, let's just believe that one there. And let's just go ahead and quote the scripture in Job, even though God himself said that that, was, that statement was wrong. Let's just go ahead and quote all this stuff here. And let's just cut out the rest. I don't even want to read the rest. Let's just let's just watch this one. Let's just stand on this one scripture and do like Satan did in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. And let's twist it a little bit to fit our lusts. So that's what's happening. We're, we're not enduring sound doctrine, but we're paying people. Please give me that sloppy grace doctrine. Please give it to me because I need validation with many other people. Because many the more and more you're heaping them up and the more and more wealthy they get, the more and more this leaven is spread. And this leaven is spread into the church. This leaven has spread into the church. I don't even want to talk about my personal experience with it because, I mean, it's, it's, it's in the church. It's in the church so bad that they don't believe the word of God. They're usurping their fleshly lust doctrines. And what they're trying to do is trying to get the doctrine. It's like Vaseline... Uh, they're trying to get this, you know, they're trying to make it fit. And I've seen so many, I've seen so many debates on uh, Google Plus and so forth where people are trying to get the scripture to fit their doctrine. But after their own lust, they shall heap themselves teachers having itch and ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. We're thinking it's okay. We're thinking it's okay to turn on the TV and watch all this wicked stuff. Anyway, I've been going for quite some time here. Um, you guys, I'm moving the show time. It's 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. For Coffee with Conrad. Hope you guys are having a good day today. Glad that you're in my life. Remember, turn off the tube. Turn on Jesus. Until we meet again, dig deeper. Go higher. When I cry, oh God, I'm to my Thank you for visiting ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks is supported by people just like you. If you've been blessed by Conrad Rocks, please prayerfully consider giving an offering. You can conveniently do so by using the contribute button on the sidebar at ConradRocks.net. Regular contributors get a spot on the Conrad's Comrades page, which links back to the blog or social media of your choice. You can also help Conrad Rocks by sharing your favorite posts on Facebook. Thanks again for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Remember, Jesus rules. That is higher than I